When you're solving force problems, the single most important thing that you do is draw what's called a force diagram. You draw the forces acting on the object it, because all of your equations and everything comes from that. So the first thing you have to do is identify what forces are acting on it. All right, we, I, I will refer to them as external forces because they're forces from the outside acting upon the thing, not the forces that are like chemically inside of the thing, yeah, no. Um, but forces from the outside that are pushing or pulling on the object. For example, gravity will always be one of the external forces acting on your object and will always go into your force diagram. Okay, it's the single most important thing that you do. So let's just say, again, if I'm in the class, I'll actually demo some of this stuff. But let's say that you have just really simply an object at rest on the table. All right, here's the table. There's an object at rest. Well, you always have to draw, represent the object as a dot and then draw the force as an arrow in the direction coming from the dot. Even if it's the pushing force, I draw it from the dot, going away from the dot. Um, in the direction, so draw the arrow in, in, from the dot in the direction of the force. Well, this is gravity. And then label it. Don't forget to label it. Well, this thing's at rest on a table, so there has to be some other force balancing this out, because that would be something in free fall, all right? If the only force acting on it is gravity, then it would be falling down. But it, the table is pushing up on it, electromagnetically pushing up on it, and that is an example of a normal force, okay? What if I were pushing on this thing with an applied force? So I, I push on this thing on the table, and it slides that way with constant velocity. Well, there's my pushing force, my applied force. If that were the only force present and I had nothing to the left, then this force would be unbalanced because there's nothing balancing it out on the, to the left, and this object would accelerate. But it's not accelerating. I said it's moving with constant velocity. So I would draw a balancing force so that it's moving with constant velocity. The forces all have to balance. I draw a balancing force. Well, what's acting against me as I push the thing along the table and it's moving with constant velocity? What's act, not, not acting against me, acting against the, the block or whatever it is down here? Friction. Would it be static friction or kinetic friction? Well, if it's already moving, it would be kinetic friction. That's a force diagram. You have to look at the scenario and decide what's acting on it. Again, if there's a surface acting on it, it would be a normal force. If there's a string acting on it, it would be a tension. Can you have more than one tension? Yeah, if you have more than one string. And the tension's always in the direction of the string. Okay, so if I were, say, uh, it'd be the last one, and then I'll stop this. If I were, say, uh, pulling on this thing with the tension like that, you know, say I'm pulling on this thing like that, and it slide, but it's sliding on the horizontal surface, so it slides along the surface as I pull on it at that angle. Well. My force diagram, there's the tension. Uh, something we'll learn later is that the normal force was dropped. Don't worry about that, but it would fall, it would drop down. Um, and we still have kinetic friction. Friction is always in the opposite direction of the direction the thing is sliding. Um, always in the opposite direction of the direction the thing is sliding. I'm pulling this thing up at an angle with the tension, but it's sliding horizontally. That's why the friction's against it horizontally. <sighs> that is more than enough information for now. Uh, <coughs> I am going to assign a worksheet that has, I think, 18 different situations, and I want you to draw the force diagrams acting on those. Just do the best you can. It's uh, just identify, draw the dot. You can draw it right on the, the in the little block um, in the space provided. 
just put a dot and then identify just as I did, you know, the direction of the forces that you can identify and um, uh, be sure to label the forces, okay, your force diagrams. Again, it's really important that you uh, work on these because they are the single most important part of what we do when, when solving force problems. <sighs> That's enough. We'll talk to you later.